I think it's time for a melty moment, and here's a nicely melted moment. This was uh, sent in by Ryan from Canada, and it's a voltage converter. It's the type of thing that you plug into a European 230 volt outlet, and it converts roughly to 120 volts. But it does so not by using a transformer. It's more like a dimmer inside with a fixed voltage, though this does have a switch that chooses between low and high. And these things are only really intended for things like irons or steamers or, you know, fairly resistive loads. You can't really use them with electronic loads or it can damage them because basically speaking it is fundamentally a dimmer and it's chopping the power on and off. So uh, let's squeeze this in the vice of knowledge because it doesn't seem to have much in the way of uh, screws. So I think it's been glued together. Let's open the vice of knowledge up, slip this in and give it a little squeeze and see if we can liberate some secrets without destroying the process. That is not giving at all. It looks like it's a uh, well-welded case. I'm just going to grab a hammer. A little delicate electronic grade hammer. Mmm. It's kind of starting to give. I think I'll just pause and come back in a moment once I've opened this. So my apologies for the loud hammering there. Uh, we're in and uh, it's quite interesting. I wondered initially if this transformer was just to power the dropper circuit, the actual uh, the uh, triac based circuit, but the reason it's got this little switch that goes between low and high is if you set it to the low setting, it just acts like a normal transformer based uh, dropper, which means you can use delicate loads on it, little electronic loads. But uh, when you set it to the high setting, it bypasses, it switches this out. Uh, it's a double pole changeover switch, and it switches in what appears to be a triac circuit, uh, because I can see what looks like a diac and the triac and the little timing capacitor. Um, so, uh, yes, I think it's time to just, uh, I'm just going to pause momentarily, and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to doodle out the schematic of this. All right, so here we are. It didn't take too long, because it's very simple. One of the interesting things, there's a fairly chunky, looks like it's rated a few watts anyway, 10k resistor, and it's just across the output, the 120 volt output, and that must be for stability, that must just to be, pull the floating voltage down on low load of this um, transformer, or also to make this circuit here stable uh, at low load conditions. So. Um, the circuitry is like this. If you switch it to the low setting, it just switches in this transformer. 230 volt winding at one end, tapped off 120 volts, and that's it. It's just a traditional step down transformer like you might find in, you know, these average low power units. But uh, when you switch it to the other direction, it switches in this little triac circuit, and it's, it's textbook. There's no suppression or anything like that, so it's going to be quite noisy. Uh, the Triac requires a pulse for, uh, from basically reference to what's called MT1, main terminal 1, and that's derived from MT, the voltage for that is derived from MT2, simply going through these resistors and charging this capacitor up, and in each half waveform it starts that cycle, that it starts charging that capacitor up. As soon as it reaches about 30 volts, this diac will then suddenly conduct and it will fire the triac. So, basically speaking, if you've got your sine wave, then, say for instance, well, just uh, roughly, it's not it's not going to be this case. If you were to set it so that round about in the middle of the sine wave it fired, then the sine wave would be powered for that uh, half of the wave because the triac latches until it reaches the zero crossing point. In reality, it wouldn't be half. I have to say, in the past, I've tried to drive 110 volt lamps with just a diode in series. Uh, that doesn't work on 240 volts. It, it's actually much less. It overdrives them if you uh, do that. So it would probably be closer to uh, a third of the sine wave, I'd guess. But, um, so it's got the 180k resistor, which is the sort of, uh, sort of uh, if this potentiometer that's inside here, because it's got a tuning potentiometer, you can adjust it to the output voltage you require. I say voltage, it's not really voltage, the output power you require is the best way to describe it. So it's got this uh, 180k resistor and then the, the variable resistor, which in this case is a 250k variable resistor but was set to 67k, which is obviously the voltage at which they decided was the sort of ideal output voltage, the, the ideal point the sine wave to trigger. Uh, it charges up this 100 nanofarad capacitor, which will only ever reach about 
probably about 32 volts. These DIACs, uh, it's a bi-directional switch component that just has a threshold, and it doesn't matter which polarity, it's commonly used the triax for driving them. It basically, when it, the voltage reaches its threshold, it suddenly turns on and delivers a, a pulse from this capacitor into the triac to turn it on. And the only other thing there is this uh, 740k resistor, which is quite an odd value. It's, it's these uh, four-band colour codes, <clears throat> and uh, it, it really is quite an odd value. It's uh, violet, yellow, black, orange, which uh, it skews me when I'm so used to seeing yellow, violet, black, orange, you know, like 470k. This... Uh, Violet yellow is, is 740k a standard value. I don't know if that's a standard uh, resistor value. But anyway, they've got that across the capacitor just to uh, make sure it discharges down to a known level and the, the, you know, after it's fired, just to make things more stable. And then, of course, they get this 10k resistor here to give a slight load uh, just to make the whole thing stable. So I'm guessing from the way that the bit that's melted is the transformer. So I have a horrible feeling that someone has plugged a high load into this but actually set it to the low setting because there's nothing to actually stop that happening. And uh, what's actually happened there is they've tried to drive a really high power load through the transformer which has, as a result, it's gone all very hot and melty and it's distorted the case. But, you know, it's not exactly hard to do, is it? Um, to if when you've got a switch that's going to choose the two settings like that, it would be quite easy to to mix that up. But uh, interesting device nonetheless. You know that it's the the fact it's got those two sections. I've never seen that before. Oh, I should mention before I before I stop, the Triac is a Sanrex T twenty five E six F. Never heard of it, uh, and it had this rather stylish heat sink which uh, was mounted over the sort of mains pins in here. It was just basically trying to squeeze as much heat sink into the space as possible. I wonder what this is for because it's clearly designed for some other sort of application. It's quite neat. It's quite a stylish heat sink. But yeah, uh, it's, it's quite a neat little unit. So let's make this a double bubble video uh, with this 1600 watt converter also sent through by Ryan at the same time. And this one's interesting because it's got a fuse. You can pull this little cover off in the back and it's got a fuse position in it. Um, and this one's not melted, but I get the feeling from the fact that it, it, it doesn't have any other settings. It, it just says 1,600 watt converter, that this is purely... Um, what does it say? Uh, do not use with power tools or electronic circuitry. I, computers, fax machines, TVs, VCRs, battery rechargers and stereos only for use with, you know, uh, well, it says 50 to 1,600 watts. It's only for use with, you know, chunky, high-power resistive loads. Resistive loads like a, a hairdryer, which has a motor in it, but, you know, the, the fact that it's got massive resistive heating element would actually hold the circuit on. So um, I'm just going to... The other one was quite hard to get to bits. I think this one's going to be hard to get to bits as well, so I'm just going to pause while I take it to bits. Right, well, that was quite tricky to open. However, now it's open, and we can take a look inside. And what's most interesting about this is it's got this massive heat sink. The circuitry is even simpler than the other one because uh, it's, you know, it's just the absolute most basic sort of dimmer type circuit. And uh, what's interesting is that the heat sink in here, normally with a heat sink you want to go for the largest surface area. So things like this hole here is quite good because it opens up a large surface area. You've got these fins, they open up a surface area. But this is just a solid, I don't think this is hollow, I think it's a solid block. Um, there is a seam, I don't know if that's just from moulding or casting, but um, I'm guessing this is a solid block and that's not as efficient for dissipating heat as finned areas, but I'm guessing that most of the loads that are going to be plugged into this are going to be like a small kettle, hair dryer, steamer, whatever. And it's going to, initially it's going to be drawing a lot of power and then it's going to cut off. And, you know, this block here will act as a sort of mass that's going to absorb X amount of heat and then allow it to be dissipated gradually in the sort of, shall we say, the off periods with these fins. So it makes reasonable sense to, to have just that thermal mass as a, as a reservoir for the, the uh, energy, initially the heat. So um, the triac is a BTA-16, let's see if I can... No, you're not going to see this. It's a B-16 
BTA 16600B, which is very common. You know, let's draw this out. Let's get this in and draw the schematic out. It's going to be simpler, so I'll do it sideways. So, uh, usual arrangement here. We've got uh, the, we've got a big resistor across the input. Yeah, the output has a big resistor across it for stability. So let's uh, start off. Um, odd value, grey, black, red, uh, grey, white, eight, zero, and then two zeros, eight K. Eight K is quite an odd value, isn't it? Eight thousand two hundred only would have been a standard value, but eight thousand is quite odd. I could be wrong. Um, so let's see what we've got here. The, we start off with the, the supply coming in, the 230 volt coming in, and it's got a fuse on the same circuit board, and then it comes out to the circuit board. So let's go uh, 230 volt in, and we'll just randomly draw that fuse on one of the lines. Um, one of those goes straight to a pin, and uh, the other goes to the transistor's MT2. So uh, let's draw that going straight to a pin. That's the 120 volt out. Or roughly, it's not actually 120 volts, it's just a chopped up sine wave. It's just a, it's just segments of the sine wave that they're uh, dimming effectively to actually control the output power. So uh, let's... Uh, add that resistor, which is the 8K. We're just going to dissipate a modest amount of heat. Uh, and that's the 120 volt out. And then we've got it's connected to MT2 of the track, which is reasonable enough. There's MT1, which I'm guessing is going to the other pin. MT1 is going to the other pin. Um, then we've got a... Almost certainly the DIAC is going straight to the gate pin of that. Yes, it is. Oh, it's textbook, really. And from here, this will be from MT2, it will be going through a resistor in this case. Um, MT2, it's going through a 100K resistor. 100K. Uh, then that will be going to, through the potentiometer, which it is. That goes through the variable resistor, which is printed on it. It's exactly the same as the other one. It's 250k. I wonder where that will be set at. Now, the last one was set at about 70k or something like that, but the resistor above it was higher, so I'm guessing this will be set for a higher level. Uh, depending on what the value of the capacitor is. The capacitor is 120 nano, and it's going to be connected between MT1 and the output of the potentiometer. Yeah, okay. So that's uh, there, 120 nano. And then that goes to the the diac that's going to uh, once the capacitor charges up to high enough voltage, it will then pulse, send a pulse to switch that triac on. So let's see what this. Uh, I would guess this is going to be set to a higher value because the capacitor the other one was a hundred nano, uh, and but it was about one hundred and eighty k, I think. Uh, so that is going to probably be one hundred and fifty k. Maybe it's set to. Let's measure that. So I'll set this to 200k and stick it across the potentiometer. It's set to about 116k. Okay. So let's say uh, 116k. I also note down that was the uh, BTA 16600B, so that was a BTA, which is a very standard uh, triac, 16600B, 
very common track. It's a isolated tab track as well, um, and it's uh, made by SGS Thompson uh, ST. So um, yeah, it's a very common track. That is just you know, it's at the minimal they could possibly get off with to make a, basically it's a dimmer without any suppression, but just with a slight load here, just to probably make it stable for. Uh, when things are not connected, or I'm not 100 sure what the value, what the 8k resistors for. Um, maybe it's for loads that uh, don't pose a continuous load. Although really, this is designed for uh, continuous loads. Uh, but yeah, that's just as simple as it gets. It's basically like a dimmer putting a variable, you know, a wall plate dimmer in series with the load to actually convert the 230 volts out to roughly 120 volts at fairly high power. But that does mean it can only really be used with lamps, resistive loads like heaters, um, and not really things like just motors on their own, which would be a bit troublesome, or electronic stuff which could be damaged by, you know, the the fact that the voltage is a lot higher, but as supplied as a series of pulses from the sort of partially chopped up sound wave. But uh, yeah, it's quite a, quite a stylish little unit, and it's just super simple. It's just basically minimalist and quite interesting for that.